Hey there, in this lecture I'm going to discuss um, elastic collisions at an angle. In a previous lecture I've discussed um, how to um, calculate elastic collisions classically and using the pipe space theory and using the other formulation. Now, the, the formula that is there for both the classical situation and the pipe space situation assumes that the two spheres or the two balls or whatever collide um, uh, straight on, so there's no there's no kind of um, a, a difference in their uh, velocities. It's a it's a head-on collision, so to speak. So, in the real world, of course, when two objects collide, they don't always collide head-on. They can collide at a different angle to one another. So the question is, how do you calculate an elastic collision where um, where you have um, two objects moving with different magnitudes? Um, and uh, and speeds and uh, performing the velocity and how do you calculate how, what their result what the result was going to be? Um, it's not terribly easy to figure it out um, off the top of your head. So one algorithm that does work quite well and I've implemented in the in the pi space theory is as follows. Um, if you take a look at the diagram here in front of you, you can see that the the object. Uh, there's two objects moving, and you break the 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 velocity component into an x and a y speed component, which makes up the magnitude. And then you have the other object moving in with its own uh, magnitude, um, and you you run a, you run a, a line from the from or a vector line from this the two centers, and you calculate an offset. So that's what you have. You have two objects colliding. With, with different magnitudes and they form an offset relative to each other. Uh, so uh, if we move to the next diagram what you can do a simple uh, technique which is you can rotate the the x-axis of the colliding object so that it matches the the uh, the two the, the 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 magnitude vector for between the two um, between the two objects and you can make it appear like it's a um, um, a head-on collision, and um, so it, what you're essentially doing is you're rotating the x-axis um, so that it matches the offset axis, um, and then you calculate the result, and then you rotate everything back again. So you start off with you start off with with the um, the offset, and then what you do is you calculate the the offset angle, and then you form a new um, solution space, which is where the x-axis matches the, the offset axis, and then you have a new magnitude. You solve for that on the x-axis. Uh, you don't need to solve for the y. And then you rotate everything back. So it's pretty neat, um, but it requires uh, axis rotation. So uh, so it isn't terribly obvious how to implement that. If you if you look it up on the internet, there are a couple of uh, solutions. I have one here on the Pi Space Physics Theory and it uses Java. So I'll go through it um, now we ha uh, here, uh, the, uh, what we're trying to do. Okay, so in the so basically you have two momentum spheres, you have them collide, and the idea of the, f of the method is you return the results in two objects. So there's two objects going in, sphere one, sphere two, and then you have results, sphere three, sphere four. Sphere, four. sphere one and sphere two are before, and sphere three and sphere four are after. They're the same sphere, but I just gave them different numbers, just so they're different before and after. And then the other thing that's important to note is um, it's assumed that they've collided. Uh, collision detection algorithms are out there but it's assumed that when you put the two spheres in here they've collided uh, at a particular angle and then you're going to calculate the elastic result, the elastic collision result. So let's just go through the algorithm. Uh, so the algorithm is pretty simple uh, uh, it's based on the ones that are on the internet if you, if you look them up. So you calculate the collision angle here, and uh, you use the math at ar ar arctan2, and then I print out what the collision angle is. So we, you know what the, the differential between x and y is, and from that you can calculate the, the collision angle. Then what you do is you calculate the magnitude and the direction of the spheres, or the balls, whatever you want to call them. So it's just literally the Pythagorean theorem, you math square root it and you get your result back for x and y. And magnitude 2, you get your magnitude based on the x and y 
uh, velocity. So, the, uh, so basically, when you're moving in a magnitude, you have an x and y velocity. Uh, you break it out into x and y, uh, and then you do. The, and to calculate the directions, you use the uh, arctan function uh, between the sphere one and sphere two. For sphere one, you calculate the angle direction one and direction two, and then the, I print out the directional angle of sphere one and the velocity, and the direction of sphere two and the velocity. Um, so then I calculate the angular difference, and this is where we do the, the, the rotation of the axes that I talked about. So basically what you do is you rotate the objects so their axes match the axis of collision. Uh, so you can see here I do math.cos, x cos, and then direction of minus the collision angle, and then y is sine uh, direction uh, minus the collision angle. So I basically rotate the axes so that they, they match the, the collision axes. And then I adjust them when I print out what the value is. And then uh, in the case of the pi space theory, it may not be the same for another individual, but I have the classic implementation here, which is the Newtonian velocity uh, final uh, for, the, uh, for V1, V2. So I calculate for x uh, for the x speed one and x speed two. So I calculate now. Here's the thing to know: you only calculate for the x speed. Uh, you might be inclined to think, well, don't you have to do it for the y speed? And the reason you don't have to do it for the y speed is because you rotated the axes, right? So the, the 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 way this algorithm works is you rotate the axes and then you calculate for the x speeds. And I do it twice here because I have my own implementation of an elastic collision uh, formula, which is the pi space one, but this is the classic one. This is the one you'd see if you search for it on the internet. But the basic idea is they basically calculate the same values. Um, in theory, the in theory the pi space one works at high at the uh, higher velocities, but it doesn't really matter for the purposes of this um, algorithm here because it's the same for either speed. And then I, the, the, the final y speed uh, is the same. And again, as I said, you only calculate for the x because of the axial rotation. So you just return the value. And then, but then you have to rotate back, uh, right? So then this is the code for the rotating back, um, which is um, an algorithm. It's basically the, 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 the trig required to rotate the object back to its original position. And you'll notice that the, the y does get uh, axially rotated, so you will get a different y value in the final results. And then you print. I print out the final values, and then I set the final values into sphere three and sphere four. So it's pretty straightforward, but um, this could be adapted to any piece of Java code. But it's in the, it's on SourceForge. It's in the Pi Space Physics theory, and um, I have a unit test for it. Um, I have unit tests and in the test area and it's the elastic collision at an angle um, okay run as g unit test and then um, I have a couple of, of tests here yeah have um, these ones so here's one I click that one so this is um test collision at an angle between two spheres uh, pi, use pi space uh, two uh, the two being the second test, and um, so you can see, I, these this is I have the mass of the object, I have the x and the y velocity, the x position and the y position, and I have the diameter, which is the, like the radius. I have the second sphere, and then I have a th the third and the fourth, which are copies of the. I have a copy constructor, so I have copies of the, these two spheres, and then I just pass them in, and I let the algorithm do its thing, let let it do its work. So, for example, I can run this one. I uh, just wanted to give you an idea how it runs. And then uh, run as a uh, J unit test. So it runs it. And if I look at it, um, the way it works is you can see the, the, it calculates the collision angle, the direction of the sphere, and the direction of sphere 2, with the angular difference. Uh, is 135 and minus 45 and then the adjusted uh, speed um, and then that's to do with the uh, rotation and then above and below I have the 
uh, helper method there I print out and then there's the result so x velocity 3 is that y velocity is that mass x velocity 4 and so on and that's it that's the algorithm and it all ba it's all based off uh, this approach which is it's basically an implementation of two uh, two objects of mass in at a particular position in space uh, with offsets and then they collide and then they then they use this and to calculate the next uh, position and uh, x my velocity that's it thank you